Hello everyone, Don the Crown here. I just want to do a quick build update. It is like day three-ish. We've been up for like 22 hours and for another stream. And we got about 6 billion DPS. And I kind of want to show you what the build is looking like. Uh, I just want to slap in one of these bosses here. I have to do it anyways for the progress. Uh, and this is going to be with DPS pets. The DPS pets aren't really all that great. We just have Cloud Gatherer Violet and Star Catcher and Shallow Sea. And I don't even know if we have all the right points assigned here. But as you can see, uh, we're doing okay damage right now. And uh, pretty smooth. We could probably go up one boss here. We had a couple of big upgrades today. And let's just kind of talk about the build. Now you might notice we swapped away from Hal and Gale. We are now playing Laser Beam. Uh, I'm going to blame this on Marty because he absolutely kicked my butt on the boss conquest here. We jumped to 1217. We got some upgrades even since doing this, so we could potentially push this up. Right now we're uh, number two that's up there. And uh, let's talk about the gear. So we drop, we, we were using Blind Vision for a while. I think Blind Vision is pretty good. This gives you life, which is okay. We're immune to blinding, which is kind of annoying because blinding does reduce your damage. So 20% chance to miss. Uh, this also makes it so 6% of the projectile speed is applied to projectile damage and gives us wind projectiles damage as well. This is a pretty good kind of starter thing. I'm not really sure how expensive this is. I can't price check this. So something you can kind of start off with. And that's using a regular boot. And then I solo self found dropped one of these while doing Mistville. Uh, these have gone up by 100 FE since I put them on, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. But this basically gives us the same effect for our main skill. And it also gives us more projectile skill level. And most importantly, it allows us to wear a real hat. It has like energy shield, other stuff. And we went and dreamed on resistance penetration. Now, one of the things I was kind of missing is that dream crafting is actually really easy to do now. And so you can get some really cool stuff like penetration on your helmet. You can get additive damage on your staff. A staff really isn't even all that great. Right now, it has a lot of uh, tier twos still. And so potentially something we're going to upgrade. These are two ones here. Uh, our, but some of our other gear needs to go first. Uh, the other thing we, cur we dreamed here was Elemental Destruction Curse. The Elemental Destruction Curse. Uh, curse has kind of got like a big readjustment this season, I guess you could say. Whereas previously, uh, there was a lot of effects you could put onto your curses to make them more effective on your skill bar. And now they're way better to be cast off your ring because most of the effect is just built directly into the curse now. So getting it on your ring is really, really good. And in order to roll these, all you have to do is go over to Patty here and go Dream Interpretation, put the ring in like so. Can't be equipped, it'll unequip it. And you just press the button here and it will show you what you got out of all the options that are here. I think it might have an armor one here. Yeah, so like it'll show you all the options that you got like so. Now you can only have three dreams active at a time, by the way, be careful with that. And then if you accept this, it'll show you what the curse part of this is. So it'll be one of these random negatives. Now some of these are actually just whatever negatives, like minion damage doesn't matter for us. So there's something you can do to get your damage going up. Put all my stuff back on here. And while we're here, let's talk about the thing that I get asked the most about. Uh, and it is how the heck am I getting all these auras active? So uh, auras basically are a little bit weird this season because every single support that we add is actually a mini restraint. So restraint gives us a little bit of sealed mana compensation for the supported skill. And uh, I just have regular restraints on everything, which is, you know, just the way to go. But uh, we, every time we add anything else because of warlock stuff, this actually reduces the mana so, or the life consumed here. So for example, here on Frigid Domain, right now we have 48 mana open. If I take off the increased AOE, we get on 37. So the more supports that you can put on, the more powerful this is going to be and level up. In terms of other skills, we're using mana boil to still make us do more damage. Still using Frigid Transmission, Periodic Burst and Grudge, I think are pretty good here. I've seen some people going and using Speed Phantom. I don't really like this as much and doesn't really feel as good for mapping. Maybe better for bossing. Uh, Secret Origin Unleash is pretty great. And then Aim, I think, is kind of really good and also makes the build kind of unfun. 
because aim makes you lose 20% movement speed while it's up, but you do get a lot of damage, which is nice. So a little bit of a catch 22. Uh, for Icebound Beam, this is what we're using right now. We are going to eventually replace this with the fifth uh, support here, which I'll show real fast. So there's a whole bunch of supports that we can get. And so the one that is big money here is the Chilling Spike. And that's about like 700 right now. And what this does is it generates all a bunch of projectiles that shoot out. And they seem to be pretty good from what I've seen in some videos. So we'll try that out. I did try out the Ring Blade and it seemed to be pretty decent clear, but definitely less damage. Uh, I'm not really sure if it would be worth using. Definitely does seem like you lose a little bit of damage there which is unfortunate. I haven't tried either of these yet. I don't think this one's good at all. And this one here, this doesn't really make sense to me. Like it gives you like eight times four damage. So <laughs> just a 32% multiplier and that's really it. The only thing that's good about this is you can level these up and that will give you like another multiplier for the damage. But yeah, so the damage pretty much right now, if I'm gonna show some tooltip DPS, just activate all our buffs, and we can even just like sit still here. This is still with the uh, damage pets up, I think. Yeah. And another thing I can do is with bridge transmission, if I teleport on enemies, I can apply paralysis. And so the paralysis here does increase the amount of damage we do, and we have plenty of time to reapply this all of the time, super duper easy uh, to do. So it's like a nice 6 billion DPS. If we go to like our money setup right now, the damage just goes down by about a third of the damage, which I think is not all that bad, Maybe even half of the damage. Uh, for the most part, I can live through and deal with most stuff, but uh, really like this is the season maybe of DPS pets. So kind of just keep that in mind for sure. Uh, what else should we talk about here? Staff, I think that you really want something that has, this is kind of an important thing just in crafting in general, I'll probably do a crafting specific video. However, uh, when you're looking at any end game thing, you look for item level 86, it's not end game, it's like mid game, I guess you could say. Uh, so you can't get ultimate affixes until things are level 100. This is kind of like super end, like down the line type of stuff. But we're looking for advanced affixes and being tier one, it has to be item level 86 requirement. And so we want to look for items that have the, uh, have one of the like advanced affixes that we want, because these are way more expensive to roll. We see six FE and 20 of the big purples versus two FE and 20 of the little blues for the basics. And so for on this staff, we have intelligence and main skill level. Now note, don't get scammed by buying a main skill level uh, four for big damage uh, for big price because you can just buy a main skill two that's low rolled and you can just truth ember roll it up. So anywhere two to four is basically the same. It's all good. So look for a staff that has intelligence or main skill or maybe both. That'd be pretty nice. The flat added here probably should be cold would probably give more damage, but I don't think that's really all that big of a deal. Spell and elemental damage are pretty nice as well. Now, if I was gonna be rolling these right now, they're both basic affixes, probably what I would do is I would roll one of these off in a way, assuming I have a lot of money <laughs> to get it back on, uh, because if I'm rolling elemental damage here, I want to be able to hit either spell or elemental tier ones. And uh, yeah, that'd be good. So we just like these, you can use the free FE and stuff as well. We'll do a nice free roll and then it hit. Also keep an eye out. Like sometimes you get a higher up roll than what you had before. Looks like I have a little bit more of the crafting material. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, I hit erosion damage, which is kind of bad. That's not something that we want. And energy shield regain, also not something that we want. So we'll just leave it as is. Crafting is really, really quite simple. Uh, for the rest of the gear, things that you want in terms of T1s, I think intelligence is really important on most of your gear here. Uh, intelligence is one of these. And then I think down here is critical strike damage. 
So critical strike damage is what we're doing here. Critical strikes, we're not really creating enough just yet to make this all that great. So this might be something that we drop out or find some way to get crit into the build. I think that's going to be kind of the next step of evolution of our damage is figuring out how to take our crit from like 14, 17% all the way up to like a comfy 60 plus. Uh, so intelligence or critical strike damage here. Uh, also for gloves, I'm going to be looking for, you can just like go through these and you can click on advanced and figure out intelligence is pretty much always the thing you're going to be looking for. For suffixes like cast speed is pretty good. Uh, and then I'm using this chest right now simply because I was exploding and dying all of the time. And uh, <laughs> it was very unfun. I only had like, I think 2000 life and I had like 50 energy shield. And this chest armor basically gives you a huge chunk of max energy shield. I dropped this myself also out of Mistville. And uh, so, yeah, I picked this up. You have a really nice high energy shield chest. You can pay potentially get around using this. And there's probably a lot of really good crafting mods you can put on there as well for damage. I'm putting my eyes on this for tomorrow. Uh, if on the next video you see for this build, I'm still wearing this chest. I'll be very surprised. Uh, and then we have false god skin. I think this amulet is better than the other one we see a lot of people using which is the Gale Amulet, but you can kind of use either one. I think this guy is using that. So this, Howling Gale, makes it so that your projectile speed bonus is also applied to the additional damage bonus. So that's kind of what's here, except for this is additional damage. And so you're kind of getting a little bit of a multiplier from that. The Eliminate Enemies under 10% life is basically 11% multiplier as well. Uh, but yeah, things that we're also kind of missing is... Uh, you know, upgrading all of our memories. Some of these are really quite powerful. And so, especially I think you get to level 30, it increases the trait level. So we can see here that this leveled this up. Uh, and I believe this was originally 1% damage flat. So 15% multiplier. And now it is 1.3. So that's going to be 19%. So it's just like an extra 4% damage there. So trying to get all of these up is pretty nice. This is very expensive to level these up. So uh, kind of annoying. I think that leveling and farming pirates is probably going to be a bit of money for people for now. But in terms of the rest of the gear, things that you kind of want to like maybe keep your eyes out is getting like some of the precise, uh, precise skills and things like that are pretty nice. Uh, some of these like supports that are going to be kind of good. There's a lot of precise supports as well that are uh, keeping my eye on. Uh, something that I'm going to consider getting. The big winner, though, is Wind Breath Dispersion. This is what I spent a ton of money on, and it's because it has this plus three minimum channel. And if we look at the prices of this, this just continues to go up. Uh, this thing is pretty insane upgrade, because what this allows you to do is always be at max stacks. And so if I didn't have this, what this looks like in terms of casting is the same as if I dropped... A quick ritual we'll just push this off for a second and you can see i'm going four to five 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 and so it's a little bit slower it might not look all that much slower but it definitely is making it so that it's every other cast where this is basically going to be almost double damage for us it's not really 100 percent double damage and the big part about getting this ring is this also frees us up to not run a where is it but yeah, we are control spell right now, which is bad. Uh, not run channel preparation. So channel preparation is an okay support. Gives us plus two minimum stacks and additional damage, but we're going to basically be getting rid of that because we're going to be putting other more damaging stuff in there and just be able to pull this out. You can probably sit on this and just get a plus one minimal candle. Probably a good idea. Also things like uh, plus grudge, plus uh, additional cold damage, all sorts of stuff is really, really good as well. I'm going to put the build code for this. I feel like it's been kind of rambling for a little bit. Uh, upgrades, I would say the one thing that I think I see a lot of people kind of messing up is that if you have a item that is below level 86, you can get stuff up to tier two pretty easily. I had so many precious embers and stuff earlier today. 
and we were really enjoying the auto crafting with like the merciless here. If you don't know about this, you can go like fire resistance, auto craft me to tier two, and you can just let it fly. Now, I don't really need fire res right now, so I'm gonna stop that. But you can put like a couple of different options in here if you're trying to craft quick. Uh, this is pretty cool as well. Might not have the resources right away, but that is pretty much that. Mm, anything else that I need to cover? Ah, uh, yes. We also want to talk about our slates real quick. So for slates, we have some, picked up some important things here. Max energy shield per intelligence is pretty nice for more defenses. Uh, spell skill level also really good. We definitely want and it immediately starts energy shield charge on reaching low energy shield status because this allows us to basically recharge our energy shield because of our passives. We make it so that whenever we, I think it's warlock, whenever we get knocked into, whenever charge starts, it can't be stopped for a second. So that kind of gives us the ability to hopefully push back over low energy shield status. And if we get knocked back down, it charges us up again. And it's kind of a nice thing to have here. Uh, and then our big slate here is one that we actually found directly off of, uh, what's his face? The Traveler. And so we just have extreme coldness. This is not something that's super great for single target, uh, unless you are like killing elites and other stuff. And so, because enemies don't really get cold and uh, frozen all that much. One other thing I want to talk about is a common question here is chili. Why the heck am I using chili? Because I have other ways of getting focus blessing. This is actually really the only way you're going to get focus blessing against a boss. Uh, if I go here, we put like winter in instead. Uh, I'm just going to keep an eye here on my blessings at the top. You'll see that I have one focus blessing. Just one. And it's not going to go up until the frost bitten goes all the way up to 100. Now it's at two. And you might think that that's okay. However, if you are. Uh, <laughs> if you are desiring to also have tenacity, which gives you damage reduction or agility, which gives you more cast speed or like just focus blessings up at all, you're definitely going to want to use chili. And so that kind of means that we have a lot of options here for legendary divinity slates. Normally I wouldn't show my search for these because before I buy one, but you know, as a special for staying all the way through, Here's pretty much all of the different uh, things that we're putting on here for our search right now. There's a lot of different good options here, potentially like preparation just gives us more cast speed uh, for, you know, reaching max focus blessing stacks, rushed, all sorts of stuff that's good. Insight, uh, I don't even know what rock does. Yeah, that doesn't help us here, but uh, yeah, pretty darn good. There's also a slate for dealing focus on getting damage to a frostbitten enemy. So where is it? There was a 25% chance to gain uh, one focus blessing upon inflicting damage to frostbitten. This interval is 1.5 seconds. So it's probably just going to pop off all of the time. You could potentially do this as well and get around using chili. This pretty much like replaces this one to one, but uh, you know, chili also does give you more fat maximum focus blessing and these might be expensive so maybe we'll upgrade to this tomorrow we'll see what's going on keep an eye on the youtube subscribe if you like the content sorry if i ramble too much it's been about 23 hours now actually on the dot almost and uh hopefully the build is treating you well, well see you guys then soon come by the stream i'm probably gonna be live